This episode of Ask the Dog Guy is about a Cocker Spaniel that's fearful of men. Here's the background. The breeds Cocker Spaniel, about 16 months of age. Age when purchased was about 15 months. Uh, an intact male. Dear John, Chip is a new addition to our family. He's been with us for about three weeks. Chip came to us from the breeder that our 14-month-old spade Cocker came from. Our breeder brought Chip home at eight weeks old from a breeder in Texas. Chip is a stud dog for our breeder, but he needed a different permanent home. I would consider our breeder to be great with an excellent and successful program. However, I am worried as I don't see Chip exhibit what I consider normal cocker behavior. His tail is usually tucked and he does not play much. He's very afraid of me and seemingly all adult males. Per our breeder, he's been that way since she had him with her husband and son. By his actions, you would swear he's been abused, but I firmly believe this would not have been at our breeder's environment. Two of my grandchildren live with us, as does their mother. He loves the kids, especially my nine-year-old grandson, and is very protective of him from day one. He does not love, oh, he does love my ten-year-old granddaughter, but is not as protective as he is with my grandson. He does get excited when my grandchildren come in and pursues them for attention. If my grandkids are away, he will focus on my wife. Chip will absolutely take the widest path he can to go around me. If I happen to inadvertently walk in his direction, he will turn and run. He always keeps his eye on me if I'm around. He generally has no issue with my wife. With his fear, I'm careful not to approach him or move too fast around him as he has this look of fear and runs away. Our bed is his go-to safe spot and I can safely approach him on the bed and he will let me pet him, even hold him, but you can feel him tense up when I do this. When I pet him or offer a treat, he might even occasionally lick my hand. At night, he will even sleep against me, but in the morning, he's off and running again. For what it's worth, the breeder came by one day and got excited. He got excited, tail wagging and attentive, and I was so glad to see this as I felt there is a cocker in there after all. I feel bad for him, and I want to show him love. I'm prepared to work on this long term, but so far, in spite of my best efforts, there's not been even the smallest bit of progress. Signed in in Florida. So I've highlighted a few things that pop out to me in this letter, and we'll review them in a minute. But let's first have a look at the videos that uh, Ed sent of Chip. Okay. Hmm. You okay? Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Molly, quit being jealous. Come on. Oh no, stop and go. You could have gone around that way, bro. Oh, there's a stop and run. Okay, keep going. I know you got your eye on me. Oh, if I move toward you, you stop, huh? Go ahead, buddy. Go ahead. Nope, you ain't having it. Come here, buddy. Come here, Chip. Come on, buddy. Here I come. Well, let's have a look here. Uh, we'll watch the video together here in a second, but uh, I'm just gonna, gonna have a look at your letter here because th there are a bunch of red flags here. And uh, um, the thing that stuck out to me the most here is uh, when we uh, said we have a breeder with an excellent and successful program. So I, I don't know your breeder, probably a very nice person, but um, we're, we're talking about something that uh, beyond how nice this person is or is not, how much they know. Like lots of times pe people tell me, oh, I've got a fantastic breeder. They've been breeding for 30 years and uh, they've won uh, uh, all kinds of ribbons and shows. Uh, yes, that's considered breeding. It, it should not be. To me, that is knowing the difference between a male and a female dog. And yes, 30 years is a long time to do the same thing. But I know lots of people who have been married for 30 years and they suck at that. And... I don't think that's an inapt analogy for 
what I've seen in the dog breeding world. There are some excellent breeders out there, but they are so few and far between that what we consider normal for breeding should not be, but it is considered the norm. So here, here's why I think this. Um, one, uh, uh, this behavior here in, in Chip is classic. This is what happens when a breeder doesn't know anything about uh, Scott and Fuller's work back in the 1960s where they did 20 years of research to learn how temperaments are formed. And um, I need to know a little bit more information here, but I've been doing this for 30 years full time and I've seen this a lot. And this is a classical, where I think the, the term you use that uh, uh, you'd swear he was abused. Well, the the terms that people use uh, in, uh, in in you know in the rescue world are uh, ne uh, neglect and abuse. And I wouldn't call it abuse, although if you're going to breed dogs and you don't do what I'm about to kind of outline, I think that's abusive because it, it, we have the knowledge, we can avoid these things. Uh, this is a stressful uh, thing for you to have to deal with. It's stressful for Chip, and there's a few things here that actually are could go south uh, in, in the wrong direction if we don't get on top of it. But uh, if we know that between three and 12 weeks of age, and we do, that if we expose the dog to infants, toddlers, eight-year-old males, senior citizens, um, men, women, um, thunderstorms, fireworks, you'll find like on my website, uh, tons of references to this, even resources you can download when you have a puppy between three and 12 weeks of age uh, to uh, like play audio soundtracks of babies crying and all that kind of stuff. But what you'll often find is is that if somebody is breeding dogs and they have the dog between, a you know, breeder would be three, uh, well, from birth, but till about seven and a half, eight weeks of age, depending on when they, they, they find them a home, they're supposed to be doing this and they don't. And so if the breeder, uh, is the, uh, you know, whoever's the head of the program is uh, a female and that's basically all the pups get exposed to, then uh, they don't often know what to make out of the way that a man moves. Uh, like I've seen dogs adapt to it, but it's a huge difference in the how in, in ultimate outcome if we can get them to um, experience humans in all their various forms and genders of between three and 12 weeks of age. This behavior does not exist when you do it and when you don't, it's classic that this is the sort of thing that you get. That's my guess is that this dog was imprinted on other dogs because of it was in a breeding situation and it was imprinted on uh, probably a, a, a females and a very likely a children. I, I, if you were able to find out whoever your breeder got this dog from, in Texas, I'd be surprised if you didn't find out that that was the, the background. And then the dog came to your breeder at eight weeks and uh, that's right in a fear imprint period. So eight to 10 weeks more or less. And so depending on how much exposure and effort your breeder went to, to continue with what should be standard operating procedure if you're a breeder, um, particularly if they're gonna hang onto that dog and to pass that 12 weeks, um, this is what happens. And so, uh, you know, again, playing devil's advocate again, um, nobody breeds a dog like this. Like this would absolutely, uh, I shouldn't say that, no ethical breeder would breed a dog like this. Isn't the goal to pass along stability and improve the breed? Um, I'll put some links on things you should ask a breeder and expect of a breeder before you pick that breeder to be the person that provides your family with a dog. Um, it's, it's, it'll open your eyes, but I just ethically you'd go, well, I want the absolute strongest in physiology and temperament um, and, uh, and intelligence, both the male and the female, and then that's what I want to breed. And if I've got, if I'm so desperate to produce puppies that I take on a dog like this uh, and say, this is going to be in my breeding program, that's a puppy mill with better living conditions perhaps, but it's not ethical breeding. So I think this problem was created and handed to you. And um, and, and I, I'm not gonna say purposefully, I'm gonna say it's it's usually ignorance. They, they just don't know. But if you wanna be a breeder, all you gotta do is know the difference between a male and a female dog these days. And you know, the whole idea of, you know, if, if you're gauging the program, on the basis of how many ribbons they won in a show, 
I gotta tell ya, does that make sense to breed dogs for the way they look or for the way that they behave and how healthy they are? Um, I want function before fashion. And uh, they could have 30 years worth of wonderful placings in shows. And if they haven't made the effort to show that the dogs have performed Cocker Spaniel in the field as hunters and uh, in uh, obedience, if you want to do obedience, to show that the dogs are able to exercise self-control and they can uh, operate in a real world setting rather than in a kennel. Um, if we don't do those things, uh, you know, it'd be like I've dated attractive women. And uh, if they're as dumb as stumps and they need instructions on how to cross a road, that's not a good partner for life, I would suspect. And so that's often what we see in what's called the breeding world right now. It is, it's as difficult as finding hen's teeth to find uh, a breeder that uh, pursues the, the guidelines that I, I'll put the, a link in the notes there towards the end. So that's what I think is going on with, with, uh, with Chip. A um, couple things here as well that um, he loves the kids. So I suspect he was around kids, uh, perhaps in that setting, if not the setting of uh, the original breeder, but then the breeder who passed him on to the second breeder. But um, a red flag here, and this, I know this isn't what you're writing about, but very protective. He, he's not, that's your grandson, not his. He doesn't protect him. He plays with him. And so that's a bit of a red flag there that, um, uh, depending on what you meant by protect, but in, in your video towards the end, when you walk into your own bedroom, um, he moves from being um, avoid you to resource guarding your wife. And uh, we, that's not healthy behavior in a family situation where, uh, you know, because it typically it, it, it escalates. And I, I would hate to see that, you know, that uh, that starts to happen around the grandkids where they've got friends coming over and they visit and then the, the friend's parents come to pick them up and then the dog kicks in. And I've seen this a million times. So I get a, a little bit on top of that. I don't like... To what extent we can um, do something about this? It's going to vary. Um, I, I'd, I'd need to know more, but uh, I've, I've got some suggestions here that will certainly break the ice for you uh, and, and help him come out of his shell a little bit faster. But uh, that one is not related to the uh, um, the avoidance of, of, of males, but I think it's worth uh, uh, noting here. Um, is, uh, his bed, is his go uh, your bed, is uh, his go-to safe spot. So that is what we're going to do here is we're going to um, watch this video here together here. I just wanted to make sure I turned down the volume here. So here's the first thing that I want you to uh, uh, remember. A little rhyme. If a dog can't be caught, the dog can't be taught. If they think they're stronger, they don't listen any longer. Fact of the matter is, his old chip here could uh, uh, beat any human being in a race. So what he does is use, when you, you trigger his fear, which I believe I've got a pretty good idea of where it stems from, but when it gets triggered, uh, he's gonna flee, fight, or freeze. And so you can see him freezing up here later. He, he kind of freezes and then, uh, in, in although I don't think it's particularly fight uh, with the resource guarding, it's more it's not due to the fear, it's due to the resource, but either way, um, those are behaviors that are instinctive. He'll do. If you could, what I would do with Chip is whenever you're home, Chip would be dragging a leash around and it'd be six feet in the house. I don't want to wreck his freedom. I want to wreck his freedom to make mistakes, to continue with behaviors that he believes are saving his life, which are not. They're, they're actually impacting the quality of his life. If he was out there by the pool, I would get myself a, a, a 20 foot, 30 foot piece of rope, put a clasp on it, click it on him. I'm not going to wreck his freedom, but I'm going to wreck his freedom to make mistakes. And the mistake he's make, uh, making is he doesn't realize what a great guy you are and what kind of friendship you could develop because he keeps running away from it. Now, the worst thing to do would be, you know, tackle the dog and say, I am going to be your friend. But if you've got the lead on and you can break the cycle, so watch here. This is pretty darn good in that he doesn't take off, but you can see he, he, he's quite uh, quite nervous. And, and I think that in time, he, he'll, he will come around, not because he overcomes his fear of males, but because he overcomes his 
fear of you. Uh, even the recommendations I'm going to make, he's still going to have this type of behavior for the rest of his life around the things he wasn't imprinted on. But uh, within his own uh, little world here, I think that we can uh, make things a lot easier on him. So here we are. Um, where is he there? So if he was on a 30-foot piece of rope there, you would say nothing. You'd just walk up, you'd pick up the handle, and you'd say, all right, come, and just haul him in. And then love him up and let him go again. And then come right away. Look, there you go, good boy. And then let him go again and do it one more time. If you do it three times in a row, there's a pattern. So, and that pattern is, son of a gun, usually I run away and I never get killed. And this time I didn't run away and nothing bad happened. And you'll find that, like even if you, here we go, a carabiner, clip it to your belt, clip him to you in the house, and just make them follow you around. Make them follow you around the, 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 the pool if you're, you know, cleaning the pool or whatever. And just do it in short bursts. And like you've got to get him to, under, to, to stop doing what he thinks is working, which is just basically reinforcing things. And we don't want to uh, push it so hard that we short circuit him. That's why the length of the leash sort of should sort of directly proportional to how fast you feel in the in the in the environment you are, and in just don't push him like if you were to say come and you thought oh it's too much then just make him stop halfway. He maintains this certain uh, distance between. Them. Cut it down a little bit and see what happens. And in time you should start to see him. Um, oh, geez, nothing bad happened. Nothing bad happened. And then we'll start adding good things happening because you can get them to take a little treat. So again, I try and do things always in threes because I think that there's a pattern there for a dog to, to draw. And, oh, gee, nothing bad happened. Nothing bad happened. Nothing bad happened. Oh, good. And then he's got something the next time to draw on as far as memories go. So what else we got in here? Um, uh, okay, well... Yeah, so let's watch this here all the way through. Yeah, the cycle would just get broken. So you're going to need something long enough to be able to um, interrupt it gently. Nice, calm energy, like, and you're doing that. Like you're, you're being, a, you're, you're, uh, your heart's in the right place, your energy's right in, in the right place as well. But it'd be, hey, what are you doing? Don't, not silly. Come on, let's go. That's it. Oh, good boy. That's a good dog. You can see as well, there's other dogs. He has no fear of them. Um, but he was imprinted on dogs. Okay. And escape. All right. Yeah. I mean, you don't, he's learning whether you're teaching or not. Get that lead on him. Uh, what species on the planet teaches their uh, their charges, their youngsters, anything when they can't catch them. None. We're all faster, stronger, more agile. Until they hit a point where they understand how to behave. Yeah, that's all. So here's the part that where you walk into your own bedroom and turn the volume up. Yeah. So that's a very different posturing there than what we had out on the... Uh, uh, the, the the patio furniture the the pool chair there um, and uh, so this is some this is again not what you wrote about but uh, this is another behavior that needs to I, like I would be recommending for Chip here uh, like a program uh, of little tiny little ways to get into his head throughout the day that let him know who's the teacher who's the student who's the student who's living in whose house. Because what's going on now is he's learning whether you're teaching or not, and he's just starting to uh, um, pick up some bad habits. And uh, you know, getting a uh, uh, getting a dog like this or a rescue dog, once they get a certain age, they've got they're, maybe they're coming with some baggage. And uh, it's like anybody my age dating somebody. If I'm gonna you know uh, put my name out there and I'm gonna date any woman I'm gonna meet at this point in my life is likely gonna be carrying some baggage. Uh, cause I got some baggage and everybody got baggage once they, you know, you have a, uh, you can't live life without, uh, um, burdening yourself with a little baggage. Um, he's got some here and I think that 80% of it's drama and I think we can get rid of that. And 20% of it, if that's what we've got to live with and, uh, um, uh, and it's acceptable to you, 
um, that's a gift to him. And I, I think he'll be a pretty good dog if you can uh, break this cycle. So that's where I would start off with is get the lead on him. Only when, only when he's supervised uh, by somebody who's responsible enough to supervise and uh, um, use it as a means to keep him from uh, pursuing patterns of behavior that he thinks is saving his life and uh, open his horizons a little bit.